So, are you a broiler farmer or you want to become one? In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five hot tips for broiler farmers that you should all take advantage of. And if I'm in a good mood, I'll give you one additional tip that almost no one does, but it's a game changer. So please stick around right through to the very end. Tip number one, you really do need to care about the source of your birds and also how you transport them. The source of your birds is so important. A lot of us never think about this. You just go on the street, get anyone, or the first person who tells you, hey, I have broilers. You know, for example, currently for us in Uganda right now, we have a scarcity of the old broilers. So people have problems getting the broilers and the first opportunity they get, the first person who has broilers around, they'll just go get broilers from that person. Hey, you're in trouble. Most likely you might not make any money because you're gambling with the source of the day oil chicks. You need to make sure that the breeder farm is a proper breeder farm and that the parents are proper parents. They need to have been vaccinated. The parents have to have been vaccinated. How will you know that? Of course you won't know it. It's only if you trust the breeder and you trust the source and you know that they will do or they will have done the right thing that you can trust the day oil chicks. If the day oil chicks come into your farm when they are weak, the feathers are not upright and strong, the birds are not uniform, then you're going to get into trouble. Because that means your brooding is going to be not good, it's going to be very, very bad brooding. You're going to be very stressed during the brooding. You're going to have very poor outcomes. You might get diseases. The uniformity of the chickens is going to be very bad. So by the time they reach the time of selling, you know, 30, 35 days or 42 days, whenever you want to sell them, depending on your target weight, some are below weight, others are above weight. It's just going to be stressful for you. You're going to need lots of heat to hit them if the parent stock is young. So it's very important that the source of your day old chicks is good. That's why I advise you to get farm up chicks. Come on. You want to place an order for farm up chicks? Link in the description. You know, just give us a phone call. Our contacts are in the description. And if you're in Uganda, we shall get those birds for you from one of our closest locations to you. But also, it doesn't stop there. The way you transport the day old chicks to your farm also matters. It's important that the birds are transported as quickly as possible with good optimum temperature and that they are not stressed out, you know? Because if they are stressed out by the time they reach the farm, they are going to be in trouble. If they are dehydrated, if they are moving for a very long time, they are going to be dehydrated, they are going to be stressed, they are going to have increased mortality during the movement of these birds. So it's very important how you transport the birds. Tip number two, the feeding. Of course, it's obvious, but hey, lots of people never pay attention to this. People are very willing to compromise on the quality of the feed. Don't compromise on the quality of the feed. Give the birds the best feeds that they can get, and then they will give you the weights that you want. You need to make sure that you get the correct feed. It needs to be mixed in the correct thresholds. It needs to be hygienic. It needs to have all the nutrients that the birds need. So make sure that you get good quality feed from a trusted source to give to your birds. Also, you need to make sure that the feeds are given in the right amounts. Don't give the birds little feed, yeah? You need to make sure that feed is present 24-7. Feed inside the feeders should never run dry. Actually, on day one, you need to make sure feed is everywhere. It's good for you to put supplemental feeders. You know, there is the recommended number of feeders, but then you need to make sure you put supplemental feeders on day one. That way, all the birds have immediate access to feed as soon as they need it. And then as the days go by, you know, maybe by day five, then all the supplemental feeders are out because now the birds have figured out where to find the feed. You just keep reducing the supplemental feeders with time. But it's very important that you have feed present. The feed should be distributed. You need a proper number of feeders inside the house. You need to make sure that the feed is at a reachable point. It shouldn't be too high. So the feed should be present. At the beginning, you need to make sure there is floor feed. You know, you need to just make boxes or, you know, trays on the ground so that the feeds is very easily accessible for the day old chicks. I can't emphasize this enough. The quality of the feeds and the availability of the feed is very important. And never forget, make sure that feed is present 24-7. For all the days that you have broilers, they should never run out of feed. Tip number three, you need to think about the health of the birds. The health of the birds is very important. And the two main things to consider here are the vaccination, and the biosecurity inside the chicken house. It's quite loud around. We are feeding the broilers. I'll probably make a video uh, of you to see how we feed our parents' stock. I'm on our parents' stock farm and it's lovely, yeah? The grass is a little bit overgrown because we are in the rainy season and in just, you know, a week or so after slashing, the grass is grown up. But it's okay. 
will sort it very soon. But yes, the health is very important. You need to make sure that the birds are vaccinated. You need to make sure that you have a proper source for your vaccines. If your vaccines are poor quality, then the birds won't be protected against the disease. Yeah, If you're giving them, for example, a vaccine against Newcastle disease, but then the vaccine wasn't stored properly, or it's b very bad quality from a bad supplier, then the birds are not going to be protected against the disease, then you're going to be in trouble because your birds could get sick. And if your birds get sick, that means you're going to have to start treating them. Then you're going to get your target weights. You're not going to you're going to put in extra money for the medication. So you want to make sure that your birds are vaccinated. And usually, the the parents and the way the parents were vaccinated also plays a big role in how strong your birds are. So it's very important that your birds get the correct vaccines. And usually, with broilers, you want to be done with vaccination by day 18 because you're going to be calling your birds by day 35. So you want to give your birds at least two weeks for which they don't have vaccines so that all these vaccines clear from the body of the chickens so that us, the people who are eating the broiler chicken, actually are not eating vaccines, isn't it? The other thing is that you don't want to be treating your birds. That's why you need to make sure that there is proper biosecurity on the farm. No diseases being introduced into the farm. Everyone takes a bath before they enter the farm. Everyone washes their hands. They make sure that they have proper overalls, clean and nice overalls, dress nicely with good gumboots, disinfection pits on the farm so that everyone who enters the farm has to step there. That's very important because it will ensure that you don't get diseases. So if after 18 days you're giving the birds drugs and medication, they are 25 days, you're giving them drugs and medication, that means you're going to reach the point of culling them and you have drugs inside the body of the chickens. And the people who are eating those chickens don't want drugs inside the body, yeah? People are very sensitive about these things. So make sure that your birds don't get sick. That we don't need to give them any drugs or medication. Very, very important for the quality and the taste of the meat and also for the sanity of those who are going to be eating the meat. Tip number four, you need to pay attention to detail. What are the details? The details are small things that are very important. Things like, number one, the drinkers. Are there enough drinkers inside the chicken house? Is there quick and easy access for the birds? Whenever the birds want water, can they access it really quickly, easily, without stress, without walking long distances? You know the birds, if they don't have water in the time they need it, they'll forget about it. And if the birds don't have water, they're not going to gain the weight that they're supposed to gain. They're going to be stressed. So you need to make sure that you have water available for the birds at the point that they need it. The drinkers should be well spaced inside the house. You need to make sure that the level of the water is at the correct point. At the beginning, when the birds have just come inside the house, you need to make sure literally the water is just at the lip of the drinker. Maybe a millimeter off the lip of the drinker because the birds really can't knock the drinkers and things like that. And so it's very important that they can access that water. But then after that, you want to make sure that the water is at, you know, nail depth, you know, nail depth from the lip of the drinker because that minimizes spillage inside the chicken house and that increases the hygiene of the house. Very, very important. You also need to make sure that there is enough feeding space, you know. The birds are not too compacted in one house. You're not doing like 20 birds per meter squared inside your house. No. You need to make sure that the spacing is okay. You're doing 10, maximum 13 birds per square meter inside the house. You have enough feeding space. You have enough drinking space. That way there's less competition for the birds inside the house. And you also need to make sure that the birds are active. You know, you enter the chicken house, the birds look very inactive. They are just seated down. They are, no, it means there's something wrong. So pay attention to details. The birds shouldn't just be lying down the entire time, clamped together, no. They should be feeding, others are drinking, others are seated down resting. There should be some form of activity. You know, they are making some form of noise. If they are all quiet, something wrong inside that house. So you need to make sure that you pay attention to all these details. Number five, litter quality. The quality of the litter inside your chicken house is so important. So, so important. People neglect this. Number one, you need to make sure that you have the correct type of litter inside your house. Some litter is not good litter, you know. If you're using, for example, pepper offcuts. Those are not good because they don't absorb water. There are some types, for example, sawdust. Sawdust is not good because its water absorption is not the best, number one. Number two, it can cause infection and disease to the bird because of mold because the particles are so small. The other thing that you don't want to use is, you know, wood, I don't know how they call them, cuttings of wood, you know. What you want to do is that you want to use wood shavings. And the best type of wood shavings is pine wood shavings. Pine wood shavings are perfect. They are good, they have, it, studies have been done and they show that they have the best absorptive capacity and that 
they remain dry and strong for a really long time. They are more comfortable for the birds. Some people use coffee husks, but pine wood shavings are even better than coffee husks and they are cheaper. So go for wood shavings if you can. Another option which is okay is rice husks. You know, rice husks are also okay. Not the best, but they are okay. So make sure that you have the correct type of litter and also you need to make sure that you have the correct thickness of litter. A lot of people put, you know, minimal litter like this. No, no, no. You need at least 2.5 centimeters for broilers of litter inside your chicken house. 2.5 centimeters, you know, this is, it's probably something like this. 2.5 centimeters. This is the thickness that you need inside your chicken house. That's very, very important because it will ensure that the litter um, is continuously changing and it remains dry. Uh, you need to make sure that the litter is wrecked once it gets together then if places or particular areas of the litter are clamped and you know they get moist you need to make sure that you remove them and replace them with dry litter so litter maintenance is very very important because if you don't maintain your litter your birds are going to get sick number two your birds are going to feel cold if the birds feel cold that means they eat less the feed conversion is less they put on less weight so it's very important that you have good quality litter inside your house. The other thing that can help better your litter quality is by ensuring that there is proper aeration inside your house because if air is coming in and going out, it means that the litter will be dried out and you know there is no increased humidity inside the house so the litter easily dries. Very very important, pay attention to that. Our final tip is the lighting inside your house. The lighting is so important. Now lots of farmers or most boiler farmers they leave lighting on 24-7 for the entire lifetime of the birds. No, that's actually not ideal. Research has been done and studies have been done and there are studies that prove that you need some form of darkness inside the chicken house for a particular time. Why? Because number one, all animals, human beings, anything, needs some time for darkness for them to grow up properly, you know? We need some form of darkness for at least some time. Number two, the times for which there is darkness, the birds rest a bit, you know, there is some form of rest. And that time of darkness means that there is better feed conversion, you know. There is rest and so the feed that they have eaten is actually converted into weight a little bit more. And there is proof that birds that have some form of rest in the night, you know, hours of darkness, actually perform at the same level or even better than birds that are in continuous lighting. The other thing is that rest reduces the mortality of the birds because the immunity of the birds is a little bit stronger and they have less leg deformities inside the houses. So how do you play with the light? Now, of course, the lighting is played with differently based on where you are, you know, but for us in the tropics, we have equal days and equal nights. So the ideal thing to do is that on day one, you need to make sure that there's 24 hour light. 24 hour light. If you're around the equator or you're in the tropics, you don't have a big variation between day and night, this is the perfect thing for you to do. So you need to make sure that there is complete lighting, 24 hours light for the first 24 hours. And then from day two up to when the birds reach about 100 grams. Usually the birds gain 100 grams by day four. If you've been feeding them well and the source is correct, by day four the birds should have 100 grams. So from day two, to day four, ideally, you want to give them one hour of darkness in the night. So at some point, but then you need to make sure that your time of switching off the light is consistent all throughout. So if you're going to be switching off the light at midnight, so at midnight all throughout, you turn off the light and at 1 a.m. you turn on back the light. Just one hour of darkness between day two and when they reach 100 grams. And then when they move from 100 grams to three days before slaughter day, you know, you now counting the point when you're going to be selling the birds or slaughtering the birds. So from day four or from 100 grams up to three days before slaughter day, you need to give them three hours of darkness. They can be three consistent hours or you can do two hours, give them light, then switch off, give them one hour. I'm using three days before slaughter because people slaughter birds at different weights depending on your target weight. Some people will target weight is at you know 42 days others it's 35 days so depending on when you want to slaughter day four to three days before slaughter time three hours like i've said and then two days before slaughter time two hours one day before slaughter time one hour and then of course on slaughter day no darkness needed but yeah that is it and this is an additional tip this is not stuff that you share on youtube because most people are not as technical as this so all these are actually in my 
farm up academic class unfortunately it's not yet live right now but it's going live very soon as you can tell i've been preparing it for a long time i've been very busy that's one of the reasons i haven't been able to upload lots of videos on the youtube channel i've been busy doing lots of work but i've also been busy preparing the farm up academic classes and all these details for the people who want to be the very best at this farming you'll find them inside this farm up academy so hey when it comes live you want to make sure that you subscribe to it so yes these are the five tips plus one for everyone who wants to do broiler farming you do these things you're going to be an absolute success don't forget to hit that subscribe button smash the notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload lots of love bye bye